Coming up, we remember the most awarded woman in country music, Eastern Kentucky native Loretta Lynn. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. She's been called the greatest female singer-songwriter of the 20th century, and she was one of us. The queen of country music and Johnson County native Loretta Lynn has died. Family members say the coal miner's daughter died in her sleep early today at her Tennessee home at the age of 90. Stephanie Elam begins our coverage with a look back at her amazing life. Loretta Lynn's rags to riches story is well known. A coal miner's daughter who became the queen of country music. She was the second of Clara and Melvin Webb's eight children. Born in Butcher Hollow, part of the Appalachia Hill country in Kentucky. Her life during the Great Depression didn't offer many advantages. She grew up without electricity, indoor plumbing, and only completed the eighth grade. As a young teen, she married Oliver Vanetta Lynn, whom she called by the nickname Do or Doolittle. He was 21. A decade later, Loretta Lynn was a mother of four, playing guitar and writing songs at home. With her husband's encouragement, she entered a talent competition and was spotted by a record producer. Her first song, Honky Tonk Girl, was a minor hit, and the Lynn family moved to Nashville. Her marriage had its share of troubles, many of which spilled over into her songs. You ain't woman enough to take my man. Lynn said her husband had problems with alcohol and her long absences on the road. They went on to have a total of six kids, but family life was not always harmonious. Touring took a toll on her health. She battled chronic illnesses and exhaustion. Her best-selling autobiography chronicled her hardships, heartaches, and rise to stardom. I can't sing in front of people. I just can't. Sissy Spacek won an Oscar playing her on the screen. Well, I was born the coal miner's daughter. In 2004, Lynn would make a huge comeback recording the highly acclaimed album Van Leer Rose, produced by Jack White. She would be nominated for five Grammys for the album, winning two including Best Country Album. Lynn brought a strong female point of view to country music and was seen as a homespun advocate for ordinary women. Well, they say that I'm too country the way I look and sound. Her career spanned half a century, generating dozens of number one songs. From humble beginnings to country music royalty, Lynn never dreamed of being such a success. I don't think it, you can dream for success because I think it's more or less you have to work for it. Her hard work paid off with a lifetime of awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013. And as for inspiring future performers, she said they needed to be one of three things. Great, different, or first. And I just happened to be different because I started writing my own songs and didn't really realize that the things that I was writing about, nobody wanted to talk about them. They were just doing them, you know? Lynn was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1988. She released her 46th studio album, solo studio album, Still Woman Enough, just last year. The country music queen died today, and her Johnson County kingdom is paying its respects. During her 90 years, Loretta Lynn built a legacy as a self-made country sensation, shattering stereotypes and glass ceilings. And when news of her death spread, many were in the right place at the right time to take a right turn into Van Leer, visit Butcher Holler, and mourn the community's loss. We're just passing through, and I got the news alert on my phone that she had passed away. And right there was the sign, birthplace of Loretta Lynn. And it's so beautiful, and we just felt so honored, you know, to be... I wish I had a dozen roses. I wish I had two dozen roses I, to just leave at the gate. Dozens of people were in the area within hours of the news, hoping to see the house that built the woman they all adored. The coal miner's daughter never left her Kentucky roots. She would perform at Renfro Valley Entertainment Center in Rockcastle County about once a year, spanning four decades. A staff member says her last performance in the New Barn Theater was in 2016. Lynn's shows were described simply as big, filled with a large arrangement of instruments, and the music, they say, would 
pack the house no matter how many times she performed. Renfro Valley staff say the country music star will be sorely missed. I mean, for, for Renfro, country music in general, and, and really the whole world, she was just a super kind soul, uh, just a really good person, an incredible talent, and, uh, you know, she'll, she'll be missed for, for decades to come. The very first female entertainer of the year for both the Country Music Association and Academy of Country Music may have been a coal miner's daughter, but she is without question the queen of country music. From her hometown here in Kentucky to the home of country music, fans are paying their respects. Tonight, Courtney Allen continues our coverage in Nashville. It's Stacy Owensby's first time in Nashville. It's sad and poignant at the same time to be here on the day that Miss Lynn passed away. Is that good? The man from Sacramento is outside the Ryman, taking pictures with Loretta Lynn's statue that soon filled up with flowers. Her musical skills, her strength, uh, perseverance, uh, kind of person she was. Uh, a lot of things stand out. He's one of many paying respects to the late country great following her death. Shocked and just, you know, glad I was here. You know, I get to come here and I get to see her statue and everything. I think it's really cool. Down at the Country Music Hall of Fame, people write their condolences down in a book to give to the family, while CEO Kyle Young reads about Lynn's life and career. Loretta Lynn became one of country music's most successful performers. Followed by a moment of silence. Thank you. Historian Patrick Huber says Lynn is a trailblazer. Being one of the very first, if not the first, uh, female singer-songwriters here in Nashville and opening up doors for uh, singer -song, female singer-songwriters who have followed in her wake, like Miranda Lambert or Taylor Swift. It's a legacy and a day Owensby says he won't forget. Knowing how big she was within the industry itself, and it's a... It's a Kind of a bittersweet day. That was Courtney Allen reporting. Loretta Lynn's family has not yet released details about a memorial service. Country singers and Kentucky natives are sharing their memories of Loretta Lynn. Carly Pierce called her one of the greatest there will ever be. She said she would sing her song, Dear Miss Loretta, tonight at the Grand Ole Opry. And Ricky Skaggs called today a very sad day for the music industry. In a tweet, he said, quote, she did more for women in country music than anyone, end quote. Fans laid flowers on the singer's Walk of Fame star in Los Angeles today. Lynn Starr was dedicated a long time ago, January 11th, 1978. She was the first female country music artist to get one. And here are just a few of the highlights of Loretta Lynn's amazing career. 51 top 10 hits, a Grand Ole Opry member for 60 years, more than 45 million albums sold worldwide, four Grammy Awards, seven American Music Awards, and eight Country Music Association Awards, and a member of the Country Music and Songwriters Hall of Fame, among many others. Once again, Loretta Lynn, dead today at the age of 90. Well, weather-wise around the mountains tonight, we are all quiet. We continue to watch high pressure in control. That means clear skies tonight and temperatures falling big time down into the 30s in some spots. All quiet now in downtown Whitesburg, as you'd expect at about 10 after 11. We'll look outside temperature-wise, still some warmer spots. Jackson's at 56, Pikeville's at 52, but many of us have already fallen into the 40s. Manchester's at 43, so is Jonesville, and it's 42 right now in Irvin. We'll continue to see clear skies as we run through tonight. Nothing we have to worry about weather-wise overnight, so we'll be down into those low 40s. Winds calm. We'll have to watch patchy fog in the river valleys and patchy frost in the usual frost-prone locations. A lot of details, though, coming up on when things could get a little warmer and when we could see Another big cool down that's coming up in a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. As those temperatures begin to drop, leaders in Breathitt County are working to get families left homeless after this summer's flooding more help. The state will be offering portable heaters for families. Right now, Breathitt County Emergency Management is collecting a list of people that will need heaters. That includes people who have no power or no heat source. You can reach out to the Breathitt County Courthouse for help. 
Home Inc. in Letcher County has begun work on building homes for flood survivors. The organization joined forces with the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky and FAHI to build at least four homes in Letcher County. Altogether, 16 homes will be split between Breathitt, Letcher, Knott, and Perry counties with help from the Housing Development Alliance. The flooding didn't happen that far from here, but this piece of property wasn't impacted by this last flood. Uh, and if it didn't get impacted by the last one, I'm pretty sure that it's pretty safe for the next one. So I'm, I'm really happy to be building houses up out of the floodplain. One house takes about 10 weeks to finish once the foundation is set. A man from Uganda has spent some time with folks in Eastern Kentucky this month. Pastor Samuel founded a ministry called Light with Truth, which has helped school, feed, and support 350 children in Uganda. Throughout the year, Samuel spends time in the United States speaking at churches and ministering to people and children. He says that is what he is called to do, and his life was changed because of a missionary. I was like, should I buy a house, a beauty house, get married, enjoy life with my family? This, that's, then then that's, uh, that's when God came in and said, Sam, I want you to buy, take all your money, buy land, um, start the ministry, register, build the orphanage, schools, church, and whatever. Pastor Samuel says he started his first school under a mango tree in 2015 on land he purchased with a vision to do much more. You can find more information about Light with Truth on our website. Hospitals around the country have been dealing with nursing shortages since the pandemic, especially. Baptist Health in Corbin says they had to make many changes during the pandemic and they are still struggling to hire nurses. Sherry Mays, the chief nursing officer at Baptist Health, says she is focusing a lot on students in nursing programs in the area. We've hired them on as externs in a department that they're interested in working in, which kind of gives them a little orientation prior to being hired. It also is an interview process for them to make sure that we're a good fit for them and that they're a good fit for us. May says they are very proud of how hard their nurses work and have worked during the past few years. The Pauley Patton Veterans Center in Hazard has seen many veterans hit bir uh, birthday milestones, but not quite as big as this. World War II veteran Oakley Hacker just celebrated his 106th birthday on Sunday. Those at the center say he is the oldest veteran that has ever been there, which makes each of his birthdays even more exciting than the last. That is super exciting and it is awesome because we got history right here and when we want to know something, we can say, okay, my little boy is studying this in school. What's your perspective on this? And he always has a good answer for you. The 106-year-old is a Navy veteran and Clay County native who enjoys watching TV and participating in chapel services. Hacker says his goal for the future is just to continue living at the Veterans Center. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, we'll take a look at Florida's long road to recovery almost one week since Hurricane Ian ravaged the state. Plus, still looking sunny as we head through the week and really on into the weekend as well. The breakdown on a warming trend, too. That's coming up. The McDonald's hash